I'm going to show you just how Calvinism turns God into an evil monster. Turn with me in your Bibles. Matthew chapter 10. Let's read 29 and 30. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. No, I don't need to read verse 30 here. 30. And shall not... Uh, where I... It's because I said I would have would. But ye... But the very, but the very head... Hairs of your head are all, all numbered. Let's concentrate... And not and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. So that song. His eye is on the sparrow. And you know he watches me. So people take comfort in that. That if God people say in poems that God is there when the sparrow dies, weeping over the death of every sparrow that ever dies. God is there because God is om omnipresent. God knows everything. God is everywhere. So he's there tenderly caring for it and weeping for the sparrow when it dies. But uh, hear this, old Calvinist. Let's look at it inversely. I'm I'm going to tell you a story. You who believe that God predestines everyone who's going to be saved, unconditional election, and He passes on the rest, takes a pass. If He chose you, you're going to get saved. If He didn't choose you, by default, He chose you to be damned forever and ever and ever and to burn forever and ever and ever in the lake of fire. Which is a violation of what Jesus said. The lake of fire was prepared prepared for the devil and his angels. But if Calvinism is true, then why didn't Jesus say the lake of fire was prepared for those who are not elected? Uh huh. Okay. I'm going to tell you two stories. That if Calvinism is true, God is a sadistic monster there's this there's this girl at a revival meeting walking up walking down the aisle to be saved and I heard these stories these stories are true my pastor brother my pastor Bo Dunford was telling us this story back when I, I was in the seventh grade I think sixth grade she was walking up to the altar to give her life to Jesus Christ. But her grandma, who did not believe in any of this, reached out and grabbed her back and did not let her go up to the altar. And as a result, she did not get saved. The pastor said that God struck that grandma down with the disease. But that's, did the girl ever get saved? Hell, if I know. I don't freaking know. Let's say she didn't get saved. She was so close to getting eternal life. But, alas, God chose her by default, that little precious girl, to be damned and to go to hell in the lake of fire eventually. God God was right there. Like, like, he, like he's there when, every, when the sparrow dies, weeping over the sparrow, as the poem says, anyways, he was there as that little, little girl was walking up the aisle to get saved. And remember, the Bible says God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He was there when that grandma reached out and grabbed her. He saw that girl's heart at that time, but because she didn't reached the point where she was actually regenerated, crossed over from death into life, as Jesus says. 
he was there just as much there as he is there when every sparrow dies he was in he, he was in the room he was in the when the sparrow dies God is in the room God is in the room when that girl was walking up to the altar to get saved God was in the room God was in the room God was watching here but alas according to you Calvinist he chose to pass on this girl getting saved and so she lives dies grows up dies goes to hell And it's all God's fault. I create good and I create evil, says God. For his glory. But God is love. Shouldn't, shouldn't, so shouldn't it be to the glory of God that everybody be saved? But God can't do this. That Maybe the Calvinist God hides behind the fact of electing not to save someone. Behind the fact that if God gives everybody free will... Not even God can make with once he gives everybody free will, not even God, while maintaining his divine hiddenness and integrity can save everybody. Not even God. So God is so be that as it may. There's this other story. This boy went forward and got saved. Pastor Don Holland told us this story. When I was I think in the tenth grade. On the 10th grade or the 11th grade. This pastor at a Sunday school got saved. He was all excited about serving Jesus. All excited. Well, the past, the youth pastor and his, uh, another person went to talk, tell his daddy and family about it. And as soon as they, 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 their daddy found out, that, oh, no, no, I ain't having my little boy become a religious fanatic. He's not going to go. The pastor, Don Hollis, said, so, so I, I saw something die in that boy that day. And he never, ever came back to God when he grew up. He died and went to hell, basically. So fucking close to being, getting eternal life. And remember, Calvinists believe once you're truly saved, you cannot become unsaved again. What type of sadistic God would choose arbitrary choose ordain this boy to come so damn close and yet still burn in hell forever and ever? Remember when that boy made his decision in Sunday school? God was in the high, God was in the room. God was in the room. God was in the room. When that father said, no, he. I'm not going to let my little boy become one of those Jesus freaks. And something died in that boy. God was in the room. God was in the room. God was in the room. I know the Bible says, God says, I will have mercy on who, whom I will have mercy. And Paul self-righteously says, God hardeneth whom he will. Why does God play patty cakes, patty cakes, fast and lose with eternal destinies of mankind? Maybe, according to the Calvinist, God says, My ways are not your ways. For as the heavens are higher than your way, the earth, my ways are higher than your ways. So we see that it's despicable that God could save everybody. And chooses not to save everybody. But maybe God, the Calvinist God at least, the Calvinist God it has a dark side. But according to God, his dark side is just as bright and shiny, bright and glorious as his light side. Fuck you, God, especially if I do not become a good looking guy. Alright. Curse you, God. I curse you.